Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis on Tuesday, November 4, Election Day in the U.S., 2014. Okay, so um, we had basically a, a somewhat of a wider range than we had the last couple of days. The market tried to sell off early, kind of in the later part of the morning, but then hit a bottom around noon and recovered for the rest of the day. And, um, you know, there's two schools of thought out there. There's one is, you know, you buy the um, the rumor, the election rumor. Let's say the Republicans win the the, the Senate and that's the rumor and, and maybe that's good news. So you buy the rumor and you sell the news. So the market sells off after tomorrow or after today when we find out tomorrow or overnight what the election results are. But... You know, my trader intuition tells me that there's just, it's too easy. And the markets never let you off that easy. So uh, my thought process is, and while that could happen, and maybe it is that easy this time, but normally it's not. And what I'm thinking is that whatever the reason becomes doesn't matter. But for some reason or other, I think there's a... Um, some probability. I, I don't know what it is. It's not a high probability. It's not a 50-50. It's just some probability that over the next day or so, okay, we could see the market spike higher. And for no other reason than it just spike higher and maybe it's a blow off top. Maybe we reverse after that. Um, but I just have this trader intuition that tells me that's coming. I don't know why. Uh, it's too easy to have a sell-off after the election. You know, right here, boom, we sell off maybe to uh, 195 or so. And it just doesn't, uh, it, it just doesn't compute. It's too simple. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So basically, the bottom line is, what do you do? You don't do anything. You wait for the election to play out. You give it a day or so. You give it tomorrow. And, um, and you see where the market takes you. I have a... Uh, a possible up day kind of uh, in my sights for Thursday. So maybe tomorrow's down, maybe Thursday's a rebound. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, from a cyclical or cycle perspective, um, I believe Thursday will be an up day. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, also, next week uh, in the, let's say, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday neighborhood, uh, there looks to be uh, extensive volatility. It looks to be like a culmination of some cycles that should produce volatility in the markets and you should have wide swings uh, during that week. So um, when we get closer, we'll talk more about it, but I'm just kind of giving everybody a heads up and what I'm seeing in terms of planning out uh, the next several trading days from what I can tell. Sometimes I can't tell anything. Sometimes I get certain hits of certain things from a cyclical perspective that should happen uh, based on the probabilities, and that's what I'm seeing, so I'm passing it along to you. Other than that, I think we can leave uh, the SPY or the spider alone for now. There's really not much to discuss that we didn't discuss last night or that we didn't already discuss here. So uh, let's move on to gold. And gold was basically a neutral day. Uh, didn't do much. Well, I can't get the chart up. There you go. Um, didn't do much. Uh, GLD was up seven cents. Uh, as we speak right now, the price of gold, uh, Gold futures is 1167 spot 40, and um, you know there's there's nothing going on in gold. Uh, I believe there's lower prices coming, and I think you know what I want to address something. I don't know if I talked about this last night or not, but I'm pretty sure that a couple of nights ago um, I mentioned a number that was down here in this 9495 area as a target for uh, the GLD, and, and I was mistaken. I, I, that was just a, a bad number. Um, the, the number I'm looking at for a near-term downside target in gold is around the 106 area, 105, 106, in that neighborhood. And where that comes from is, uh, and it could be up to 107 or so, but where that comes from 
is uh, when you when you look at the price of spot gold to the price of uh, GLD, uh, it's it's roughly it's not exact, but it's roughly 10%. GLD represents about 10% of the price of gold, and I think that gold may have as much as $70 on the downside. And I may be off. I may be overshooting that a little bit. And we'll discuss that in a second. So if that coincides with 10%, you figure $7, seven dollars, seven from 112, you know, brings us to 107. Um, uh, I'm sorry, 105. I don't think it's that low. I think you know you may see a bottom in in the 11.25 neighborhood in gold, and that would coincide with about another. Uh, let's just call it. Um, yeah, forty to forty-five dollars, which only brings down the price to about one ten. So um, you know, it's it's touchy feely. Um, we'll see what happens, but I'm not going to be buying gold on a price on GLD. I'm buying gold on a signal that it's bottomed. So I'm going to look for a turn signal. I'm going to look for a bottoming tail. I'm going to look for a reversal candle. I'm going to look for a high volume reversal day. Those are the things that we're looking for to signal a reversal. We're not going to catch the very bottom. It doesn't matter because when it reverses, it's going to have, now let me go bring up a different chart. I'll bring up the daily chart. Okay. When this reverses, it's going to have a lot of, uh, oversold condition working off to do uh, I know that's bad that's bad grammar but um, you're gonna have to at least retrace up to about 116 117 and if that comes from 110 six dollars sixty dollars and, and that could be just the beginning of a move but that's at a bare 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 minimum if gold's gonna go lower it's still gonna retrace that much when it does bottom in this area here down at the 110 109 whether it's 107 8 9 10 we'll know it when we see it by virtue of how it makes a bottom whether it's a reversal with high volume uh bottoming we'll we'll see it and i'll let you know what that looks like uh speaking of bottom where has oil been oil's been on the bottom so i know i've been kind of preaching uh, in these videos that I think the price of crude is going to 75 and the price of crude today got down to uh, I'm looking at a different chart on a different screen just bear with me I'm gonna get you the low the low is 7584 so um, that's in my mind in my book uh, that's close enough that satisfies my $75 target now of course, it can go down to 75, it can go down to 74, it can go down anywhere it wants to go. But I calculated 75. I believed 75 based on um, my not only the mathematical calculations, but also the technical analysis, the retracements, this, that, and the other. And all things pointed to really, you know, 74, 75, 76. So um, I've been telling you 75, give or take a dollar, and, and that's where we went. So where do we go from here? Now, we can still go down further, of course, but if you look at this here, okay, this, um, here's your highest volume day was yesterday. This was a high volume day. But it was uh, it put in what we'll call a bottoming tail. Okay, so you have a bottoming tail, a reasonable high volume day, certainly more than average. The volume was about a little less than 13 million shares on average. You'll do about four to five in the USO. This is the USO, of course. And um, yesterday you did upwards of almost 19 million shares. So that it seems like a capitulation low there could be another downside day but we're getting close to a bounce in oil so that's what I'm seeing there um, anything else I want to discuss um, yeah I think we'll leave it there for tonight that's pretty good information um, I'm David Frost my strategic thanks for tuning in for another episode of common sense market analysis